So many consequential contests in the coming months. We wanted to talk with someone who has been studying and commenting on politics and government for years. Cal Thomas is a nationally syndicated columnist, also a former colleague and friend of mine. And welcome to South Florida. You've just moved here. Nice to be here. I'm still learning the language. <laughs> okay, well, we'll try to speak English tonight. Thank you. you. Uh, and, and this is an important year here in Florida. There yeah. are some big races. Uh, we could see the governor's mansion uh, change hands and go to a Democrat for the first time in a long time. Uh, and we could see the sitting governor become the junior senator yeah. from the state of Florida. Yeah, what's amazing is that uh, nothing seems to change in politics. I come down here from Washington. I look at the profiles of the various candidates, Democrats and Republicans. It's all the same script. We need to spend more money on education. We need to have a cleaner environment. We need to uh, reduce the debt. We need to spend more on this. It's the same old stuff. But I think unlike many other years, the Republicans, whether you like Trump or not, have got the issues on their side. You even look at Florida, which now uh, the, the latest uh, unemployment rate, 3.8 percent as of uh, June, uh, one-tenth of one percent lower than the national rate. You've got uh, African-American and uh, Hispanic unemployment at record low levels. Uh, the GDP is 4.1, which the so-called experts said was impossible when Trump said it could grow 4 percent during the campaign. They've got all these things working for them. The problem for Republicans is is also the benefit. President Trump, he's doing all these great things, but he is overcoming the great things with his personality disorder. I, I want to ask you about that. Is this now the Republican Party? Is it the party of Trump? I mean, how, how valuable is his endorsement, for example, in our upcoming primaries for the gubernatorial candidates? Well, he's claiming five for five in the special elections uh, yesterday. The Ohio election, the special election and the, the, uh, in, for Congress is uh, still there's some, uh, too, close to uh, too close to call, outstanding ballots absentees to count but uh, look he's got a very strong base and as you know not only in Florida but anywhere else turnout is the key and uh, a lot of his supporters are, are very rabid but then so are the Democrats they're energized as well it was interesting that uh, the candidates endorsed by these uh, this New York woman uh, and uh, Bernie Sanders uh, who are socialists uh, all lost so they were 0 for 5 on their endorsements Let's talk about uh, about the president because in your latest column you actually offer yeah. him some advice, yeah. uh, and I wanted to put a little bit of that of that up on the screen because you urge him to promote a positive agenda with an upbeat attitude while avoiding demeaning and demonizing your opponents. Yeah. You say that there's no better way to make them your critics look bad and petty than for you to look good and gracious. Try it, <laughs> but Cal, we're talking about a president. This would be a complete change of character if he were to act that well, way. Well, what I give some examples though. This trashing of LeBron James and calling Don Lemon of CNN the dumbest man on TV, which ought to make you feel good. Uh, <laughs> but, but that's so unnecessary. Instead, he should have invited LeBron James to the White House with those at-risk kids that he is uh, legitimately helping in his hometown of Akron, Ohio. And he could have made his case again for school choice and how important it is for kids trapped in uh, underperforming schools, even failing schools, as Jeb Bush has done in this state when he was governor with his charter school movement. Uh, you focus on on a positive agenda, but this constant negativity and attacking your opponents doesn't change any minds and doesn't really uh, warm people to your person or to your cause. Well, you're talking about attacking opponents. He's also attacking the media as his opponent, the yeah. enemy of the people. Yeah. He's attacking uh, the FBI and yeah. intelligence agencies and mm. special counsel Robert Mueller. Mm -hmm. um, what does this all do? Would he be as combative if it weren't for the Russia investigation looming over him right now? Well, I, maybe not as combative, but he's always been combative. I, I mean, when you grew up in New York City uh, and you're dealing with all of these, uh, the unions, uh, the builders, the politicians from both sides, mostly the Democratic side, you're going to be combative. And that was one of the things that endeared him to an awful lot of people. Elect me, I'm a businessman, I can cross the aisle, I can do all this. I just don't think it's happening right now. But then the Democrats don't have anything. As I read not only uh, the positions of the Democrat candidates in, in Florida, but also at the national level, it's the same old thing. And the NAACP came out the other day, their strategy going forward uh, to the next general election is going to be to try to, to portray Trump as a racist. But I also read a poll that uh, the African American approval for Trump is as high as 20%. Now, if he can hold even half of that in the general election, be hard to beat him. it'll be hard to beat him because the Democrats have relied on the black vote for generations. But as Trump said during the campaign, why don't you try a Republican for a change? You've tried these other guys for 40 years. What have they done for you? It's a good question. So we've got a midterm coming up and a lot of people yeah. predicting uh, a blue wave. <laughs> yeah. How do you see it? Well, you know, it's like going to a palm reader, Rick. No matter how many times they're wrong, people keep going back to them. <laughs> uh, remember, Hillary Clinton was a slam dunk. She was going to win. Trump, there's no way he could be in the White House. Uh, 
All of these so-called experts and pollsters have been wrong so many times, and yet we in the media keep going back to them because uh, we really want somebody who can predict the future. Unfortunately, they've done a lousy job. I still think the issues are on the Republican side, and I hope the president takes my advice, though there's no guarantee he will. He doesn't take any other's advice, apparently, including his wife, who, who came out in support of LeBron James after his uh, unfortunate remarks about him. That was what if the well. Democrats come out with a street fighter of their own, someone who's combative like Donald mm -hmm. Trump, someone who will swing hard like yeah. Donald Trump. Would that change the dynamic a little bit? Well, I'm not sure. You know, we had that with Bernie Sanders last time around. He got an awful lot of young people. Uh, the demographic was uh, very unusual for a guy, an old guy, an old white guy, got an awful lot of student support, uh, probably because he promised free education and forgiving all their tuition loans. But uh, I don't think combat alone is enough. I think if you've got the issues with you, and the, and the president, the Republicans have them on their side right now, that's what you really need. And, the, and the, I think people, most people I talk to want to lower the political rhetoric. I've been in the media for a half a century. The media are not the enemy. Maybe certain reporters are. But Reagan had the same problem, and he overcame it with self-deprecation and with building relationships with a lot of people in the media, including Sam Donaldson of ABC, mm -hmm. who was one of his biggest critics. Well, again, welcome to South Florida. Thank you, sir. Congratulations on your recent wedding. Thank you very We're much. We're glad you're here, and we hope to see more of you here on CBS4. I'd be delighted. Thanks Thank for you. having me. Thank Tom you. Thomas. Okay. And a reminder that as we get closer to the August 28th primary, you can visit our website, cbsmiami.com slash campaign 2018, for all your election news, and that includes interviews with all the candidates running in the major races.